Hello, my name is Jim Shramsky and I'm with Binsfeld Engineering. We manufacture transmitters for rotating sensors. I will now demonstrate how to install the Torque Track 10K instrument for the measurement of true mechanical torque on a rotating shaft. These are the four main components of the Torque Track 10K system. The RX 10K receiver with LCD display simple keypad user interface, and analog 0 to 10 voltage output, as well as RS-232 digital data stream. The battery-powered TX-10K transmitter that accepts the input from bonded strain gauges for torque measurement, as well as other sensors. The RM-10K remote control for configuring channel and gain settings on the transmitter, and the BH-10K battery holder which houses the 9-volt lithium battery used to supply power to the transmitter. It makes changing the battery quick and easy, even while installed on the shaft. Let's begin installation. I will now prepare the battery holder and transmitter for installation on the shaft. First, remove the cap screws from the cover of the battery holder. Attach the 9-volt battery to the snaps on the back of the cover and place the battery and cover back into the battery holder. Reinstall the cap screws and secure them snugly, but take care not to strip the threads. Next, I'll install the two conductor power cable, which I've already cut to length and stripped and tinned the ends of the wires. I'm going to install the black conductor in the negative battery terminal. Secure the screw and do the same with the red conductor in the positive battery terminal. And last, I'm going to take the TX10K transmitter and screw into place the transmitter antenna. They are now ready for installation on the shaft. As you can see, I've already installed the strain gauge and lead wires. Now, to place the transmitter, I've cut a small piece of butyl rubber and applied it to the bottom. This will allow me to stick it into position and temporarily hold it in place while I position the battery holder. I'm going to do my best to align the center points of each so that when I wrap the tape it comes across the saddle in each of the housings. Next, I'm going to take the fiberglass strapping tape and wrap it around each housing. And I'm going to do it in the direction opposite to which the shaft rotates. So that as the shaft rotates, it pulls the tape tighter rather than pulling it off. You want to pull tightly as you wrap the tape. Make sure that each wrap is good and tight. We recommend using at least five wraps. And if the RPM of your shaft is very high, you may want to use more as much as 10 wraps. And I have enough wraps. Cut the tape.
And now I can attach the lead wires and the power wires to the transmitter terminals. I've already attached the lead wires from the strain gauge to the TX10K transmitter according to the color codes red to positive excitation, green to positive sense, white to negative sense, and black to negative excitation. Now I'll connect the battery power cables to the screw terminals. As you can see, once the power is connected, the transmitter LED indicates that the transmitter is powered up and transmitting data. At this point, I would normally use the strapping tape and super glue to secure the lead wires and power cable to the shaft. It's now time to set up the RX10K receiver. I will now demonstrate how to attach the receiver antenna and power supply to the RX10K receiver. Look at the back panel. As you can see, the connectors for the antenna and power input are clearly labeled. Take the threaded connector from the receiver antenna and screw it into place. Make sure that it is secure. You'll want to position the receiver antenna within 25 feet of the transmitter. Next, connect the power supply, which I have already plugged into a proper receptacle. Now, flip on the power switch. As you can see, the LCD display on the front is lit and is indicating that it is receiving data from the transmitter. Next, I'm going to use the select keypad to scroll to the gain parameter screen. The default setting is 4000, which is typical. If you're unsure of the torque levels you'll be seeing during your test, this is a good place to start. Next, I'll show you how to use the RM10K remote control to configure the transmitter for channel and gain settings. In order to configure the channel and gain settings on the TX10K transmitter, you need to use the RM10K remote control. As you can see, it has a keypad which has the gain and channel up and down arrows, as well as reference shunts and transmitter on and standby buttons. In order to send a command, point the remote control at the infrared sensor on the transmitter. I'm going to increase the channel by one by pressing the up channel button. As you can see, the LED on the transmitter blinks indicating successful reception of the command. A nice feature is the standby feature, which allows you to conserve battery strength by putting the transmitter in a sleep mode. To power the transmitter back up, press the on button and you're ready to take data. Now that the transmitter channel and gain settings have been configured, it's time to remove the gauge offset. As you can see, I have an initial offset of negative 1.74 volts. This is inherent in the strain gauge. Because I have zero torque on the shaft, I want my output to be zero volts. This is easily accomplished by scrolling to the input auto zero screen and holding the up adjust button for three seconds. Now my output is zero volts and I'm ready to record data. All I need to do is install my data acquisition. The connections for zero to ten volt output or RS-232 port for digital data stream are on the back side of the receiver.